coaches across the country used the coach pad this past season to be more efficient with their scout card prep on the weekends as well as when out on the practice field working with their scout teams. Whether you're a coach using a computer program to create cards or drawing them by hand, the coach pad is for you. Never printing paper or stuffing a binder, clearly seeing scout cards outdoors in the bright sun, and using the coach pad on game days, syncing diagrams from the press box to the sideline were some of the features coaches enjoyed this season. This offseason, get your coach pad at thecoachpad.com to get your program ready for next season, thecoachpad.com. Uh, welcome back to another episode of the Gap Down Backer Podcast. Uh, as we start our Christmas break here, obviously this will post a little later. Uh, we have the head coach at Oak Hill High School uh, down in Southern Ohio, uh, Coach Tyler Kratzenberg. Coach, how you doing? Good, Coach. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. It's good talking to you for a little bit at the start. And um, like I said, sharing some stories. We've talked a little bit on and off over the years, as I've kind of mentioned. Um, before we get in your background, I, I do need to make one comment, though, for listeners. Uh, make sure you uh, subscribe, like, all that lovely stuff. Um, as we get close to 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. Um, and then I think we have a couple hundred on the podcast apps. Um, but uh, ignoring that little segue, uh, Coach, how did you end up at Oak Hill? Well, um, Oak Hill is only about 35 minutes from where I grew up and played at uh, in Ironton. Um, it's kind of been a long, big circle to get back home. Uh, I started uh, – Playing college ball for three years, went to Mount Union for a year. Um, then I went to play at Mount St. Joe in Cincinnati for two and, and finished up kind of early with school and was done playing and didn't know if I could or should coach. So um, I volunteered um, at a main at Clear Creek. Both my nephews were playing there at the time. Uh, Scott Hinton was the head coach. He's a principal now at uh, Granville, I believe. Kind of let me come on game days. Um, on Fridays, and then a lot of the teams in MSL play JV games on Saturdays, so I got to coach a little bit. Um, just come stay for the weekend, be in the box, kind of be around, see if I was interested. Um, got into it, loved it. Felt like I had a lot to give, especially being young and being able to do those things with the kids. Um, then I got my first um, opportunity. I went uh, – I stayed in Cincinnati, northern Kentucky area after I graduated – um, worked for uh, Dave Browser at Dixie Heights in Kentucky. At that time, we were 5A, which is D2, uh, coach receivers. He was a um, traditional five-wide empty guy. They were all Tony Franklin system people there, and I had no idea who that was. And um, then we got halfway through, realized we had no quarterback, and we had about three running backs, so – he said, you know a little bit about running the football, so can you help me figure out what we need to do? So we kind of dove into that, us and our offensive line coach, um, Coach Balsey, he played at uh, Thomas Moore, was OC there, went straight wing tee, so I knew a little bit about that. And went from a throwing it all over the place to rushing for like 3,800 yards, being a receivers coach in that offense. You know, there's about three or four drills you can do, stock block, uh, hitches and fades, and that's about it. Um, so learning at that level, I mean, we played, you know, Michael Mayer, uh, you know, who's an NFL now, uh, just got drafted at Notre Dame. We played Beachwood, he won the state finals. So leaving a small town and even Amanda Clue Creek was the same way, um, to see that type of talent, those coaches at the 6A, 5A level, um, was really fun to kind of gauge where I was, what I needed to work on, um, Stayed there, went actually came home for a little bit for about three years and was at Rock Hill. Um, Coach Nip had left, took the Chesapeake job, which I knew Coach Nip really well. He's helped me tremendously. He stayed the night on my floor. We went to clinics together when I was a young pup. Uh, Coach Lutz, who coached me, he was, uh, which would be uh, the nephew of the old man. He took that job. Um, come home, was kind of young, ambitious. Um, what sure if I wanted to coach and they told me a bunch of those guys had coached me they all went out there um, and told me I was going to coach middle school I had a little more pride in myself and really felt I was getting knocked down as a young guy because I coached at a 5A school before that so I learned how to deal with parents and I was the middle school head coach and helped on Fridays um, so I got to learn and they, they 
that was a big thing is being young and, and being humbled that, you know, even though I was coaching at a big school before on varsity, come out of college ball, that, you know, that doesn't mean that you get what you want. You got to earn it. You got to learn the ropes, which I'm thankful for now being a head coach, learn the, the stuff you didn't anticipate as a coach with parents and the organization and um, equipment and all that stuff. So was there for three years, um, went to Heath uh, in the COVID year, uh, hopped in with those guys. They coached against me when I played. Uh, I wanted to do middle school because I um, didn't know what I was doing life-wise yet. Uh, they brought me in and told me that I was going to coach quarterbacks and that's how it was going to be. So we uh, won the league uh, in 2020, beat Newark Catholic and John to win the league. That was the, I think it's the best statistic league that they had. Um, offensively, we broke a lot of records. Um, Coach House and I took the offense and kind of built it together. He was a zone guy. I was a power guy. Um, so we had some basketball players play. We did some fast screen stuff. It was really fun. Um, and then I actually got the chance to go back. And of course, in that time, I started interview for head coaching jobs. And that's kind of where you and I started communicating Twitter um, about job openings, you know, that type of stuff. And went through a lot of interviews, didn't get some of the ones I was hoping to. Got to go back to Dixie in 2021 to coach for Coach Browser again. He was going to retire. Um, so that was cool to get to go back with those guys one more time. We were 6A then. Uh, um, we had a really good team, had some guys go D1. Uh, we played uh, Covcath, um, who made a deep run. Uh, Beachwood won the state title again. That was also the year that fifth-year seniors in Kentucky could come back uh, in that COVID year, so that was an interesting <laughs> experience. We had Mr. Football come back, and he was 19 for Beachwood, and he was a stud. Um, but I, I got this job kind of late in 2022. Applied for it, didn't work out the first time. Um, they called me again. I took it, got to move home, and uh, been nonstop busy with it since I landed. And we're on month, not even been here full two years yet, but two seasons. So building, and uh, it's going to take some time, but we're doing a lot of good things here. I mean, do you want to talk about that real quick, taking it late? Because I've had that experience as well, like when I had the Northwestern job. I literally didn't meet kids till June 1st and that's a very interesting dynamic. I don't know if I would do it again. Personally, if you give me try to take a job after kids are already at school, um, I'm not saying it's impossible and could I probably do a better job now? Yes, but I don't, obviously it's not the ideal situation. Um, you want to kind of talk about taking a job really late. Kind of the hurdle. Well, I think the biggest thing, you know, taking it late and obviously it being my first head coaching job, you know, I didn't really think about it until I asked, you know, what time are, am I going to come into school to meet the kids? And they said, well, we already got out of school the week before. So that kind of put it in perspective for me of, well, how do I get a hold of these kids that I don't know? Luckily for me, um, and I don't, you know, any other job, I don't think I'd be this lucky, but I knew some people anyway in the community. Um, one of our senior captains I had known since he was a baby. So he kind of rounded up all the guys who had played and we had a meeting at the field house and kind of started it off then. But it was kind of a put it together, hope guys show up. You may have a team, you may not. Um, it was looking back on it, it was like you said, I mean, it's probably kind of suicide, really. Like it kind of makes me think like, God, oh, that was probably not real smart. Um, but there's nothing I could do. I did what I could to try to get all the kids there. Um but then, like I said, you know, you just don't know when you get into – and like I said, we didn't get in here till, uh it was Memorial Day. We lifted on the 29th or 30th of May. So, um, we brought them in that Tuesday. And all we did was lift and run, you know, to kind of keep them um, accountable and, and busy while I, you know, I put together the rest of my staff, while I figured out how many helmets we had, what kind of shoulder pads. Like, I don't – and again, I mean – and it's funny, I mean, you know, I walked in with, um, you know, the job was uh, three people, including myself, within four months. So, you know, I didn't know what was what, where was things. I walked in, and I'll be honest, I looked, uh, I said, you know, where's the extra football shirts? Because I don't, I don't have one. I didn't play here or anything. And the only thing that was left here was a 3X pullover. And, you know, I'm about 155 pounds, and <laughs> it's not going to do it. Um, so it kind of showed me, like, you know, 
that's not where I'd like the program to be ever again to where, you know, the head coach walks into town from being gone. I lived in Cincinnati, you know, I moved home to the area and in a field house, locker room, coach's office, there wasn't a single shirt for the new football coach. I had to go get some ordered. Um, I, I just, you don't know what you don't know. And I, I think now I understand things more like you said, you, I don't know if I would do it again for sure. I think that's, um, but it was, um, I got lucky just because I knew a couple of people, but if I didn't and walked, you know, in the middle of Georgia or Florida, I think that would be a struggle. Um, but now being here and I'm in the school building, it's, it's, if I was in the school building when I got here, it would definitely help more for sure. Yeah. Now, and just, I mean, it's always an interesting experience. Who were the coaches were, uh, when you were at Mount St. Joe? Um, so Hop, who's the head coach, he was my special teams coordinator. Um, none of those guys, uh, I got to think. Caleb wasn't there yet. Um, he was still at Batavia or just finished up at Batavia. Um, but Hop was the um, special teams guy and kind of like the co-DC. And they kind of were grooming him to either be the DC or eventually probably the head coach, but I don't, I don't think the way that things went down, I don't think he, we, anybody knew that he was going to take that job or you know, it was going to be open that quickly, um, which he's the right guy for the job. There's no doubt about it. Um, but um, we had a lot of guys actually uh, like Coach Grippa, Tom Grippa, who's at Milford right now, I think yeah. he was an OC there when I was there. Um Rick Thompson, who I think maybe still the DC or may just retired, he was a coach at Boone County for years when Sean Alexander played. Um, so there's a lot of guys when I was there that were all like Cincinnati high school coaches who'd been in the game for a long, long, long time. Um, but and then Hop was kind of the um, the guy who played there and was coaching there and kind of wanted to stay. And he's, I mean, I think he's done a fantastic job. They just won the league oh, yeah. weeks ago. Yeah, so, I mean, two, great two really good years back to back, and I, I know Caleb the OC really well. Uh, he spoke at our clinic last year, and um, I, I just enjoy talking to him. He's part of one of the crews I know. Him, Rob Page, who, Rob Page coached there at one point. Yeah, um, yep. he was also a friend of mine. So yeah, um, but I mean, I'm gonna kind of let you get started. Like I know you had some stuff you want to talk about the your quarterback run game, so I'm gonna let you go ahead and share your screen. Um, and then we can cut it's easier for me just to poke questions from there. And um, coach does some interesting stuff as coach gets shares the screen. Um, coach obviously set some records at Heath as an OC uh, and quarterbacks coach. Um, I'm not, I'm gonna try not to hold that against him being at Heath. Uh, um, and then, uh, like if you watch any of their film or highlights from this year, I know you guys ran a lot of quads and quarterback run game, um, and so forth. All right, coach. Um, coaches shared a screen. Um, it I, they do a lot of quarterback run game stuff. Um, he's I know he's kind of worked the variety over the years of zone and gap scheme. And uh, so, coach, I'll kind of let you have it, and kind of we'll talk from there. So, um, like coach said, you know, I learned power truly. You know, when I went to Dixie Heights in 2016, like and really understood it because my background was a full house T and we're just going to base block and man on man and pound it down your throat. Um, you know, we've come a long way since, but I think, <laughs> um, and, and like the podcast, you know, once I figured out what gap down backer meant, um, you know, that's, I mean, it's funny because that's all my kids, my lineman could tell you that that's all coach says is gap down backer. Anything you ask gap down backer, just trust the rules. So, um, so our, we had a lot of injuries and things happen, um, you know, so it, it made us uh, have to force our quarterback to run the ball more, uh, which is an extremely tough kid. I try to protect him as much as I can being a quarterback myself, but, you know, I was the same way. I think, you know, when you have a, such a great run game and you're able to do things, you know, you got to have counters off of it. Uh, our run game was something really good for us. And obviously, you know, at times that was the only guy we had that could run the ball. Um, like I said, I only have a few, like I said, the good, bad, and the ugly, there's a couple of different cuts, you know, you'll have some end zone cuts and some, um, I'll kind of let some play through, but, you know, a lot of our stuff was either true power, um, you know, a kick and a wrap, 
Uh, we have our GH counter here will be our first one. And then uh, we dabbled in later in the year. We only ran a couple of times, which actually ended up being really good for us. We called it a superpower. So, um, mm -hmm. of course, you know, a lot of people don't understand, um, you know, we were at Heath, we had, you know, our quarterback who was a former fullback. So when you got to use the running back as a blocker in the box, you know, a six-man box to a five-man offensive line, they got one more than you do. But I think when you have a stud who can block in the backfield – you know, you're six on six and, you know, you can still run gap scheme. And that was something that we got guys to do and understand that we were trying to get um, whatever our surface was plus three. So, you know, we had a three man surface. We were trying to get to a six man surface with, um, you know, or a, a five man surface, a plus two with our kick and our wrap with the running back. And then sometimes the H would come across and make it a six man surface plus three. So that's something we've dabbled in a little bit towards the end of the year. We're still learning, but um, you know, I'll kind of speed up here. So this is our um, our GH quarterback counter. We ran a lot, um, a lot of like uh, H set. Um, we just tag our numbers or just for where our H knows where to go. Then his responsibility is the same. No matter where he lines up, he knows what he's doing. If he's the uh, kickout guy, he knows. If he's the wrap guy, he knows. Um, so we ran a lot of power um, and counter with him to the play side. Um, and this actually was to tie the game up um, late in the fourth quarter. Um, and we had, This is the only time we ran it this year. We had it and we just didn't run it. But we got a good job of a good kick out and a late insert. Uh, the overhang kind of started outside and then um, he – inserted into the box i'm not a big fan of the close view but our end zone cam here i'll kind of walk through slow we get good down block um and then the overhang kind of inserts late as 83 is kind of looking um we do a good job there of kicking and wrapping like i said i think a lot of people um have a hard time with that i think our biggest thing in this off season was we kind of a lot of people do the numbering system with you know the option and offense we did a plus minus system so we did a plus side linebacker which was the play side and a minus was who our down blocks had to get to um now four was a player he's one of the better players in our area he's only a sophomore um but you know he was more of a spy type in this game because we ran so much power and counter um with our running back that he got a little eye candy with our fake, as you can see, and the plus linebacker there kind of filled late um, and kind of got caught in the wash. So, you know, 25 for us would be the plus. He's the play side, and four obviously is the minus. Um, you know, so he dives down inside with the mesh as well. So we get a great gap here and a great kick and wrap. So, you know, that was the only time we ran it this year and which I mean, I'm glad it worked, but it was something that I, you know, we did a lot of things off of it in practice, but we just never really got to it. Um, as much as we ran power to the play side, it was something we kind of thought we could go to. Um, so we ran a lot of tight end wing. I mean, I dug into Kenny Simpson all summer, uh, a lot of red and blue, um, red overs, we would call it. But so we ran a super power, which is what I was talking about. So, um, Normally in our power, you just have a straight kick and a wrap. So we have almost a double lead, a uh, double wrap. So our wing here, 45, is going to kind of J block and kick this guy out. And then our running back and guard will kind of get old school, you know, wedge terminology, shoulder to shoulder. One will kind of peek in, one will kind of peek out. Now, my running back's a freshman, and he's uh, not the sharpest tool in the box, and he knows that. Um, but so 45 does a pretty good job. We want guys to beat us outside. We don't want people crossing our face, of course. 52 does a real good job. You know, when we run our gap scheme, our guards that pull the last man line of scrimmage on the wave, as we call, we want their shoulders and hips to be in contact and kind of riding the wave. That way, the first person inside, which our running back, like I said, is young, and he just kind of goes in. That's the guy he should probably pick up. Uh, which becomes the downhill safety. At that point, we're winning in the numbers game. Um, so we felt like 
you know, obviously our guard's going to wrap inside as he does. 14, I'd like to see him kind of come out and pick this safety up here. Um, but, again, like I said, he's a young pup, and he just kind of went in and did his thing. Um, but then, like I said, our quarterback's a good player for us. We wanted to try to keep him healthy as best we could. Um, this is a closer view of it. I don't think we have end zone of this one. Um, my right tackle. So we had an unbalanced set here. I mean, 73 was our tight end and our 45 was our wing. But um, my right tackle here, 75, is a freshman. He's a young pup. I need to see him kind of get his gap step. 75 or 73 kind of helps him. Um, and then he kind of gets going. But you could see where 14 should be picking up the downhill safety, and that would kind of help things a little bit. Don't have to make the guy miss. But. That was something that we got into um, when we decided that, you know, he was going to run the ball for us. Um, this is super power again. Now, there's times where he bounces it. I'd like for him to get up in the hole. Um, but this is a 4-3 look. Um, they never played us really wide. So this is something we thought we could get to. The overhang guy, eight here, always came up the field really hard. So, even though it looks like he bounced it, he did get up inside at first. Um, like I said, and sometimes, like I said, in some of these other clips, you'll kind of see, uh, I'll go back to that one. Coach, how, how front wise, you said even front here, how much even versus odd are you seeing down there? Jack, <laughs> um, I think it's a good mix. I think, um, I think there's more three, four down here. Um, and then there is a four two five. I mean, four two five for me, gap scheme wise, like I'm chomping at the bit. Three front um, gives me a little. Three four is not as bad. Um, four three, like I said, and this team here did a good job because like our numbering system, for example. So if we're running sixteen superpower, so eight would be the play side linebacker to us. Now he does come up off the edge and present as the uh, the in man line of scrimmage that we got to kick out. So the Mike linebacker here, there's two minuses. When there's three linebackers, there's two minus. So in your four threes and your three three stacks, you're going to have a plus and two minuses. So we always try to make sure that the first plus or the first minus we've got to go attack is the last minus. We'll get to the second minus with probably the wrap guy because. Um, with superpower, we get two lead blockers on the pool. So with our running back and our guard, but eight kind of um, sets the edge here, and it kind of changes for us. So seventy three does a good job of picking him up, kind of. But I'd like for him to get to eleven uh, because we should have, you know, forty five should be taking him, and our guard will be looking inside. Uh, well, I'm sorry, our guard should be looking for him, and our 45 will be picking up kind of what else is there, kind of a cluster here. Um, but, like I said, to give um, the good kick out, a lot of teams set the edge hard, and I, you know this as well as I do, like the old days of uh, squeezing down, uh, kids just run up the field, and which for me is great because I don't have to kick you out if you're just going to run up the field. So, you know, with non-disciplined defenses, with overhangs or edge setters, when a guy squeezes, that makes power a lot difficult because kids can't really dig out that five that slants down inside or that, that head up four. Um, I would prefer to block a four, two, five. Um, three, four wasn't terrible, but it kind of gave us some fits depending on how the outside linebackers played. It was more like a bare front than it was easy, but – um, four two five, which is kind of what these guys did against us. We ran, I think we ran three formations in this game, and ran uh, power and counter and things kind of for the most part of the night because they just had a four man box or a four man front. It was just so much easier for our guys because that's kind of what we start with. Um, I think we bounced this here, and you can see this is a little bit of a. So this is a guy who kind of squeezed. Now we did a good job. Our H Jay blocked this pretty well. Um, but my quarterback didn't stick his nose up inside like I'd like him to. He's got two leaders. Uh, and it kind of opens up. But he's he's an athlete and made some things happen. And then he ends up breaking some tackles here. And 
making a play. But, you know, when guys squeeze, it makes it a little bit difficult. Um, but, like I said, I think a lot of kids just make it easier for us and just run up the field. Uh, we do have end zone copy of this one. So, so this is a good look at it here. Um, like I said, 83 does a good job of getting inside out. We don't get a great push by the left tackle here. Um, I think that's a linebacker. That's actually the plus linebacker that steps in there. I think we could have got through there, um, but like I said, he bounces it and then tries to make a play and does a good job. Um, his big thing was he wanted to try to outrun people early and then kind of understood. We we talk about to our running backs, um, you know, hash number sidelines. So once you get up inside, look for the hash, get to the numbers, then run, outrun them, you know, up and down the sideline, which we not, are not a very fast team. But the principle of that has helped our running backs see to hit – the hole and then kind of jump out. Uh, this is 15 superpowers just the other way. Um, so our H will kick out again. Like I said, guard wraps, and then the running back is shoulder to shoulder with him. Uh, and this kind of opens up really well here for us. Um, you know, and I've dug in a little bit to the scoop block. Um, we run things like this. I don't – we have a lot of – guys that can chase it down with the teams that we play like the Wheelersburgs and you know the Waverly's of the world they'll chase you down from the backside of course uh, we got an end zone copy of this one so this is a lot better look at it here from our down blocking you know our left guard does a great job left tackle I'd like for him to get to number four so we talked about that plus minus so they're in a you know in a true he's a stand up in 55 is 69 to stand up so it's a six-man box, um, and for us, you know, that's a win. We're going to get our five up front. Our H is number six. My running back's number seven. So we are plus one in a run game uh, with running the quarterback here. So I'd like for my left tackle here to get to number four. And even though we don't, my center tries to. We try to slip him, um, which we worked on that this week just because I had bigger guys up front that we could get by. Um, I'd like for our tackle to still work and not kind of get in the way, um, which the hole ended up being there as well. But you just see how many guys are in the hole on the pool and with the court or the running back meeting that guard in the hole. Um, i like for my right guard to get a little more square, but they're shoulder to shoulder in the hole, and we're just kind of running into our own guys because there's that much room, which is never a bad thing. Now, again, like you said, we did some different things formation-wise. This was a week that we had absolutely no running backs healthy. Um, so we still got into a – I mean, you'd call it a um, – I guess it would be a 20 personnel. Or not 20, it would be like a – yeah, we got tight end wing. 12 kind of were empty. A lot of these guys do different things. But I got a freshman wing, so he kind of gets in the way. I believe on this one. This is just regular 15 power. So if he was the running back, you know, side here, he would be responsible to kick out the first guy head up to outside of our tight end here, um, which they're in a really condensed front. So it kind of, you know, how freshmen are mess. If it's not exactly what you explain to them, it's going to mess with their eyes. So, and you'll see in this to where he's like, hey, there's nobody here. What do I do? So, our left tackle is working down. Um, our tight end does a good job of picking that guy up. I think that – I don't know where our guard was. Looks like our freshman guard forgot to pull, which that happens when you have multiple freshmen playing. Um, like I said, quarterback's a tough kid. Uh, this is a tighter look at it. So, for us, I mean, the gap – you know, as a gap scheme guy, you see this front, I mean, you're just building a wall. Um, we all know that. And then, like I said, this extra guy looks for a kick, um, and he kind of stands in the way. I'd rather guys just work up field and go meet him rather than him meet us. I said, quarterback does a good job of Justin. So, this is the same look. We just took the slot. Um, we actually had uh, one running back this week, and um, 
we had some more receivers healthy, so we tried to unbalance them. We had our, our left tackle here is a, an extra lineman, and this is our, our normal tight end who played some H for us. So we're still, still – um, we got a two tight end set to an extent, but, you know, from from tackle to tackle, we've got seven guys, and they're in a four-two-five. So um, this is – you know, we don't do a great job schematically of blocking this. Um, I'd like for my – tied in here, which this kid was a really good player for them. Uh, he did some good things squeezing, so we did have some solo calls that I would have let them adjust to, where it was kind of like rap and just let our, our H lead and our right guard rap. So um, we called this single. Uh, I think they had a single call on here. Um, and he kind of gets inside and kind of clogs it up, as you can see. But, um, but getting to the minus – linebacker um you can see that so we we tell our guys if you're comboing or you're doubling at the point of attack um we can't let run throughs happen so 11 here was the minus we can't allow 11 to undercut us here underneath our double team and have a free run through and we always tell them if they go over top that i don't want the tackles to come off because if he's losing ground to make a tackle, that means we're gaining yards. So we do a good job of um, – he goes behind. I said quarterback again, just, you know, kind of got clogged up. He bounced it, got a first down. Um, but like I said, that's him being an athlete. This has got a little bit of motion. Um, like I said, when you're deep in the season, you got injuries, you're just trying to get guys um, – you know, moving and guys, you know, rotating in coverage. The biggest thing with motion that I've learned and even some of our shifts, um, you know, I got a lot of shifts actually this off season from a lot of wing T guys like David Bishop, who was down at North Hall in Gainesville, Georgia for a long time. Um, and then some things that I've done in the past. Um, but Coach um, Josh Niblett at Gainesville High School, I went to see him in the spring, uh, watched practice and got to meet with him. Um, you know, I – I'm not a big, um, you know, I, I like to kind of do things and learn on my own, but I, I like a lot of the stuff that he's done, even when he was at Hoover for years. Um, you know, we went down there in the spring and I uh, drove seven hours, watched him spring practice, um, and we met for three and a half hours uh, going over stuff on the board. He kind of – he gave me whatever I needed, wanted. Um, some of the shifts that they do, and he even – he's got some new stuff now, but – really helped us, especially early in the season, trying to get guys out of place. Um, for me, motion-wise, I, I want to – one, I want – especially if I'm running the football, I want to get guys that I know they're going to play man-to-man. I want to get guys out of the box, and I want to return under because if they're not in man, you know, either, there's two ways you're going to play man or you're going to spin off and to the motion side, or you'll just slide your linebackers, which, again, will still get a guy out of the box. So, motion-wise, they were starting to play us a man, and they were kind of confused. So, they widened a the guy out and rolled a guy off. So, as you can see here, um, so nine here is a, is a track guy. He went to the state track meet. Um, he ran a 4 5 40, 4 4 40 in the summer. Been battling ankle stuff. So, really, I got him the ball one time in this game, but everybody knows who he is. So, everybody was, you know, kind of on alert when he would go in motion. So, you know, we've got four down, three linebackers, and an overhang. So, we're kind of flirting with an eight-man box. Um, and then we move him in motion. The overhang creeps out, and then this guy spins out of the box. So, they went with an eight-man box to now a six-man box. So, for us, we've got six guys up front plus a running back. So we went from being down one in the box to plus one in the box, just with eye candy motion. The quarterback didn't get up inside as much as I would like for him to. Um, kind of let it play through, but he's, you know, he, he's still learning. He was not really anticipating on running the football. Um, but like I said, we just get some motion here just to get people moving. Uh, and I try to do that early in the game. There's some things that I always try to do with my guys in the box. Um, I want to know if they're in man or in zone, um, how they line up the trips, deuce, 
tight end wing, and, you know, into the boundary to the field, that type of stuff. Um, we got the end zone view here. Um, like I said, you can see where he needs to really get up inside this kickout block. Um, my right tackle, my, my freshman, um, does a good job. We were working back here to um, – so really, you know, this guy here, this is four, the guy that I talked about, they were, he was a really good player for him. He is the plus, even though he's almost head up over my center. So, and this is the minus. They're going to lose him uh, in the blitz game. So, four, we kind of get him in the wash a little bit, which is good. But like I said, my quarterback doesn't quite get up inside enough. And I think we can cut back here um, with the cutback lanes. But – he tried to get up and try to outrun this guy to the side. And I'd rather him just stick his foot in the ground and get up. But um, like I said, some different things that we got to, you know, uh, adjust with. Obviously, when you have injuries and you're trying to piece things together offensively, um, you know, the quarterback for us was um, he played with uh, stress fractures on his shin. So he's got pretty much had broken shins all year. So he was a tough kid and to have to run him was painful. But, um, you know, he, he was a kid who wanted to play, and, you know, we kind of gave him some opportunities to make some plays, which he did for us. So, but like I said, we, we've got some other things that we did. Um, like I said, we, we pieced some things together and kind of what fit us late in the year. We got rolling late in the year with health. We got better. Um, and like I said, this was a game that we got beat on a 42-yard field goal, down 14 with seven minutes, um, come back, tie the ball game, and uh, got beat on a field goal last second. but. You know, we ran power counter. Um, that was pretty much our bread and butter um, for um, to finish the year. But the, definitely the gap. I'm a gap scheme guy. I, I don't. I don't know much about zone. I know what I know, but I don't. It's not a lot. So I, I think you know it's something I'm still learning, um, trying to help myself better myself. But I think that's something I'm going to dive into. Um, we're going to get into some different things this year for sure. I'm going to go back to kind of some old school stuff with some guys graduating and some guys we got coming up. We got uh, some hard nosed, gritty kids. So I think we're going to go some under center, wing T type stuff. So, but um, like I said, spread's been fun. I enjoy it. We're going to do some of it. Um, I got to learn it going from my background of, like I said, a full house T. And then I got to learn the spread and, and different things at places I've been and which is, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a multiple guy, I guess. I'm always looking for new things. Yeah. Now, well, you, I mean, obviously power and count were your main run game. What else did you have in run game wise? Um, we really try to get in Buck this year. Buck, um, we had success in, you know, the early part of the year when, you know, running backs went down. Um, I'm going to revisit Buck. I like Buck. Um, I learned a lot about it. I didn't understand some things. Um, I think there's some benefits of an under center. There's some benefits in the gun. We did it all out of gun. Um, not a ton. Um, but like I said, traps are a big one for us too. We long trap more than a short trap, especially in the gun. Um, trying to think. We Jet was a good play for us my first year. Um and we actually ran it a couple times and scrimmages. It was really good out of empty. Again, lost some running backs. But we ended up going to um, our jet stuff middle to the end of the year ended up being uh, power read stuff, which um, likes to get our quarterback an opportunity to get the football. And we were really good at power. So we tried to get something, you know, where we could give a guy an option to give it or take it. Um, the first time we ran it, I, I didn't know who had the ball in the game, which was great. I mean, I knew what I called, but I thought we ran jet. And I was like, well, that's not good. And our quarterback was on the opposite hash running. So, um, and again, with a young team, you know, you try to figure out what works. You know, it's unfortunate that, you know, when you have injuries, you got to put people in different spots. But, you know, you can't run everything. I'm, I'm slowly learning that. Um, you know, I ran ISO my first year here in a pistol, old 21 personnel. Um 49 times it was our best run play and then power was second and I ran no ISO this year because I thought I had guys that were quicker that we could get on the perimeter um, and do some stuff which 
not that we weren't able to, but if they were healthy, but I think ISO, I should have, um, and I did all that stuff a couple weeks ago. You, you look at yourself, scout yourself at the end of the year and even during the year. Um, ISO would have been a really good complement to our power because I think what happens when you run so much power, especially here and people I've played against, coach against that, um, their answer to power is, you know, to squeeze, you know, to slice inside the tight end. That, that, that uh, I guess it'd be a, a tight, a six eye, you know, a five staying there, but really slicing across the tight end's face, especially a bigger guy to where your tight end can't whip him and wash him down. Um, you know, for me on the defensive end, if people run power against us, I want our, I want you to run against my stud. So if you can whip my stud, which we are my first year, we had a guy play in the North South game. Um, and, you know, we, we under shifted everybody's strength because I had a dude and that's where you're going to run it. And I had more confidence in my guy stopping you. Um, and again, most tight ends in high school, especially at our level or, you know, if you get a 185 or that, that's a big tight end, um, you know, and sometimes, you know, we use an extra lineman, of course, have a little more behind, you know, to push and drive on a down block. But um, I think, you know, blocking that five tech out in the old ISO scheme of guard doubling down to the mic or, you know, to the our same rules and we just insert. I mean, they want to squeeze it. We're just going to fan you out. And I think that would have been a really good compliment to our power game when people wanted to slice us and, and uh, slant it underneath of us to kind of cut down the gap box uh, moving down. But I think something, again, you learn and you self-scout, and that was something I kind of kicked myself in the rear for this year. You run up 49 times your first year, which, again, got hired late. I had a handful of plays I wanted to get in, and that was a really good one for us. And we didn't run it this year as much as I'd like to, but I think we will moving forward for sure. Yeah. Okay. No, perfect, Coach. Um, coaches, uh, give Coach a follow on the Twitter um, or X or whatever we're calling it these days. I think it's X now. It confused me on the update the other day. And I was I didn't know what it was myself. Yeah, whatever it is. And um, so give him a follow. Uh, talk to Coach. Um, coach is a good dude. Um, I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything. Um, probably not, probably. Uh, like, share, subscribe, as I kind of said at the beginning. Get close to 5,000 subscribers. Um, otherwise that's another episode of the gap down backer podcast.